What's going on everyone? Man am I excited to finally release this season's first buy low sell high. For me, I wanted to hold off until there was enough sample size to classify players as a buy low and a sell high. Now we're here after one month of hockey, hopefully I can give you some solid trade targets or player for you to use as trade bait. Before we jump into this video, make sure you leave a like, subscribe if you haven't, and check out our video description to gain access to all of our content channels. Without further ado, Let's jump over to our first installment of the buy low sell high players for this season. The first buy low player on this list is Brian Rust of the Pittsburgh Penguins. Maybe not the biggest name you'd expect to see on here, but big names means you're pretty unlikely to land a trade without giving up too much. Rust's ADP on Yahoo was 109, meaning he was a late 9th, early 10th round pick on average in most drafts. To me, this is about where I'd rank him, and in the early going, he hasn't provided fantasy owners with 9th or 10th round value. In just 8 games, Rust has 1 goal, 5 points, adding 25 shots, all while playing over 18 minutes per night. Rust's minutes are down, but it's no cause for concern. He was dealing with a lower body injury early in the season, and it definitely takes a few games to get back up to speed. In the early going, all of Rust's advanced stats look great, his Corsi numbers are up, his offensive zone starts are up, and his shot rate is at the highest of his career. Rust has been one of the more consistent players in the last 3 years, he was over a point per game in 2019 and followed that up with 22 goals and 42 points in just 56 games last season. His shooting percentage this season is at just 4%, well below his career average of 12.5%. As the numbers begin to regress towards the mean, we can anticipate him to start scoring very soon. Finally, Crosby is back playing again which provides a big boost to the Penguins lineup and does boost Russ's value as they're going to be playing on the same line and on the same power play unit. Overall, I think Russ is a great buy low target, and remember, if you're unsure about any trade decisions, leave a comment and I'll respond as quick as I can with some advice on the trade decisions for you to make. The second buy low target, and I'm definitely repeating myself from last season, is Kevin Fiala of the Minnesota Wild. At this point, you all might think I'm crazy about Fiala, but I promise I have good reason. He has just 2 goals and 9 points in 15 games after coming off of 2 exceptional seasons. His slow start can be attributed to his unlucky 4.2% shooting percentage, which is 60% lower than his career average. Other than his goal production, everything in Fiala's game this season is trending upwards. He's playing a career high in minutes at 18.31 per night, around a minute 30 increase from last season. His shot rate is right around where it was in 2019 and 2020 at 10.4 shots per 60. Fiala's possession metrics are at the best of his career, a 62% Corsi 4 percentage, a 62% Fenwick 4 percentage, and he's starting in over 70% of offensive zone starts. This seems like a broken record with Fiala, he's off to a slow start and almost everyone tries to move him or drop him, but those who play the long game with him win in the end. He has 26 points in his final 19 games in 2019, and 22 points in his final 19 games in 2020. This may not be my last call to buy low on Fiala, but right now it's a perfect time to make a move to acquire him before he gets hot. Finally, the third buy low target for this video is Brady Kachuk of the Ottawa Senators. Now in some leagues, it might be impossible to trade for Brady, but it's hard to tell. Some fantasy owners might get complacent with his slowish start and the fact that Ottawa won't be playing games this week. For all the FP fans out here, we all know how good Brady actually is. He was on pace to have another 250 shot, 300 hit season last year while scoring over 20 goals and there is literally no other player with this kind of production. Statistically, Brady has been about what we expected out of him this season. In 12 games, he has 7 points, 36 shots and 56 hits, nearly 5 hits per game for a forward who racks up points and shots. It's just amazing to see. For the people who view this video, I definitely think it's worthwhile to try and make a trade for Brady. He's someone who can dominate the categories for you in leagues with hits and shots, and he's easily a top 10 to 15 player, depending on the rest of season production. He was likely a high pick in the draft, making him difficult to acquire, but at this point in the season, he should be at the lowest value possible. The Senators are a disaster, but Brady should come back healthy and continue to be a fantasy superstar that we all know. The first sell high player in this video is Tyler Bertuzzi of the Detroit Red Wings. Don't get me wrong, I think Bertuzzi's a really talented player on a team that has impressed everyone this season. The Raymond Larkin Bertuzzi line has been great this year, but I don't think his point per game production is sustainable at all. Bertuzzi's 3.6 points per 60 is well above his previous career high of 2.3 points per 60 set in 2018. His shooting percentage is extremely inflated at 27%, 
almost double his career average, and his 6.9 shots per 60 is extremely low for a forward who has 9 goals. All of these metrics point to Bertuzzi seeing some regression in the near future, making it a perfect time to sell high on him. His possession numbers are at the lowest of his career. He holds a 51% Corsi 4 percentage, a 50% Fenwick 4 percentage, meaning when he's on the ice, his line is at about a 50% split offensively. I think he holds some name value and the production has been solid enough to provide you with some solid trade value. And yes, you could look to trade him for some of the previously mentioned players as a buy low. The other sell high target in this video is Troy Terry of the Anaheim Ducks. Probably the most impressive player of the 2021 season so far, Terry is off to an absolute tear. 12 goals in 17 games and 22 total points. And aside from the first game of the season, Terry has managed to have a point in every other game this year. Now, I'm not sure how fantasy owners will value Terry given he wasn't even drafted in most leagues. It's difficult to justify trading for a waiver wire pickup but his play this season has been phenomenal and in some leagues, he could be one of the highest ranked players. Nevertheless, I truly think Terry's current production is somewhat fluky and here's why. The last season, he was on pace for 34 points and was at a career high 1.7 points per 60. His shot rate ended at 5.9 shots per 60. And this season, Terry's points per 60 has nearly tripled to 4.4 points per 60, while his shot rate has only increased by around 40%. Another major factor that I use heavily when deciding on sell highs is the shooting percentage. Troy Terry has a career 12.7% shooting percentage, and as of the making of this video, Terry's shooting percentage is more than double his career average at a crazy 28%. Now it's very likely these numbers regress to the mean, which should result in slow production in the near future. The Ducks are sneaky good, but I don't think it's sustainable, and for Troy Terry owners, it's going to be really difficult trading him away but in the long run, it could be very worth it. A quote I love to use that speaks to the situation is sell when people are buying and buy when people are selling. Terry's most likely scenario is that he falls off at some point this season, and at that point, you won't be able to get any trade value out of him. His sample is extremely low, and you're better off trading for someone like Nikolai Ehlers who had a big sample of success. Whatever you do, make sure you leave a comment on your trades or any trades you're contemplating, and I'll make sure to respond as quick as possible. That'll do it for our first buy low, sell high players video. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, and if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. As the Fantasy Puck community prepares you for this season, make sure you click the link in our description and check out all of our content channels to ensure that you're prepared for this fantasy season. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next one.